Uh, let's talk a little bit about our connected home solution. Yeah, so you'll see it here in Q3, we talked about um, delivering Z-Wave device control. So, right. uh, so from the Secure Smart uh, software today, you can control uh, lights and locks and garage doors and thermostats. Um, those are all Z-Wave devices. Um, we talked uh, just a moment ago about uh, scenes and automation, how we're going to work on that in Q4. But then what's, what's beyond that, right? Um, right. What's, what's going to be next to come for our connected home solutions? And, and uh, that's going to be uh, reaching out and connecting with all of the other um, API level integrations. The integrations with um, things like uh, Nest and Ift and, and Amazon Echo. We're really excited about what that's going to mean for the platform um, and what it, what it means to the, the experience that we deliver to um, our, our end users. Okay, so that's some things that we can look forward to in 2018. Uh, Scott, let's talk about what future-proof communications means with the Helix system. Sure. So um, obviously, this is a, this is a uh, IP first, right? We we are we are all of, all about the Ethernet port here, yes. here at IP Data Tell, but um, it's more than that, right? Because we, we always keep an eye on um, on on the ball with respect to what are we going to do going forward um, with the Helix device. Um, you're future-proofed in a couple of ways. The first is that it's modular, right? And, and that means that I can swap cards in and out. So if today's technology is CDMA, great. I can put in a CDMA card and have dual paths. Um, same with the Z-Wave module, right? I can add that Z-Wave module, and I've got Z-Wave functionality. If for some reason, some way, Z-Wave becomes, you know, falls out of favor and, you know, mesh Bluetooth or something else becomes the, 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 the wave of the future, mm -hmm. well, you don't have to go reinvest in this hardware. You simply pop out a card, pop in a new one, and that modular design means that um, you're future-proof. You, you can um, utilize this panel going forward. Okay, fantastic. A lot of interesting things to consider with future-proof communications. Now, you mentioned LTE. Let's talk about the LTE for Helix. Yeah, so this, this is where I get excited because I get to actually announce something. Yes. That, that doesn't happen very often, um, but um, so this, this is probably the first time that this has kind of been widely publicly broadcast, and we now have an LTE solution for the Helix panel. Um, and it's pretty exciting. One of the things that we found as we were developing our offering um, on the communicator side of the house um, was that um, a, a lot of uh, other competitor companies, they either um, weren't delivering um, uh, real LTE devices, they were kind of pseudo LTE, okay. um, or they were delivering a device that um, didn't have uh, multiple antennas, so um, it was LTE, but it was kind of dumbed down, right? They didn't have the diversified antenna, didn't have that, that experience of being able to have great coverage with an LTE solution. Okay. Um, so the Helix falls on, on all of that research and all of the work that we did on that, and this utilizes the same thing. There's actually two antennas in here. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you look at the, the graphic that we have here, you can see on the top, um, and it's, in the center is a, is a picture of the card with just one of the antennas attached. Okay. Um, but if you see on that left-hand graphic um, at the top, you can see there's one antenna that's kind of pulled up, up out there. It actually mounts where that red tape is there. And then the other antenna rolls down to the side and mounts in the same position that the old CDMA antenna did. Okay. Um, on the card, we've got um, kind of the cellular indicators, and we call those the link indicators. They tell you, um, are you connected to the cellular network? Are you connected to the, the back end, central station? Um, you, so you, there's real information being delivered from those LEDs, and then obviously you've got your signal bars. Okay. So we're incredibly excited to roll out LTE for the, for the, for the Helix. It's something that, as from the, from the very first time that we talked about the, the Helix solution, and we were at the same time talking about the, the LTE communicators, people were asking about it. So here it is. It's out. Um, so. Uh, we, we're effectively um, replacing the CDMA solution with the, with the LTE solution. All right, and fantastic. Your first product announcement, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay, let's talk about alarm signaling notifications and controls as they relate to our Helix. Sure, so obviously we're dual path. We just, we just talked, spent some time talking about that. But um, one of the great things about the Helix is this is an always-on system, and, and it gives you um, kind of that, that instant responsiveness that people are looking for from their apps. So um, either, um, at, either regardless of whether it's kind of talking about home control or talking about the, the, the alarm system. Um, but we also have a really advanced network supervision. So all of these transactions, all of the uh, communication between the Helix mm -hmm. and our network cloud and the central stations, all of that's monitored. We, we know within minutes if, if there's a problem with, with that device. Um, and obviously we can deliver notifications around that. And that all, all of that infrastructure um, enables our smart devices and our secure smart app. Okay, great. Now this slide is a little bit of a, re a review from our last presentation, but let's talk a little bit about accessories and sensors for Helix. 
Yeah, so one, one of the incredible things about the, about the Helix platform is the, the wide variety of sensors that you got for it um, and the ways that each of those sensors communicate with the panel. Um, so if you've got sensors that are things like um, a, a PIR, an infrared um, sensor, mm -hmm. or a, the um, smoke or CO detection, or you know, a, a tilt sensor, a water sensor, temperature sensors, um, and your typical window and door sensors, all of those communicate with the Helix over the what we call the Cryptics network. Mm -hmm. um, that's, um, w w I think I've got a good slide in here, a, a couple of slides later, um, that, that really kind of breaks out all the antennas. But those are all at the 433 megahertz part of the spectrum. Okay. And um, they're there for a reason, right? That we're using that part of the spectrum for a reason, and that's because when you're down at 433 megahertz range, um, that does a really good job penetrating through, you know, windows and doors and walls. The wall. It's a nice long uh, uh, spectrum. Okay. So um, there's that, but then the it's also broken out, right? Because we've also got um, devices talking to the Bluetooth radios and even to the Wi-Fi radios in the device. Mm -hmm. So each function was, was separated out. That's a part of the architecture of, of the Helix. And, and that's something that a lot of people don't realize. So um, we're, we're, in a, we're having a deep dive conversation, so I think it's important to kind of to break out a little bit. You know, the, the keypads um, are talking to the Bluetooth radios. Okay. Um, and the um, HeliTouch, the 7-inch touchscreen device, that's talking to the Wi-Fi radio. Okay. And that's, that design is, is on purpose. It's so that those things all stay out of each other's way. Um, if, if I've got a lot of activity happening on a keypad or on a HeliTouch, um, there's, there's no crosstalk with that traffic with the sensors that, that, are, that are happening. So it's all by design. Fantastic. A lot of thought went into this. Exactly. That's great. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Z-Wave qualified uh, automation devices for the Helix. Sure. So um, what we've done is we... Obviously, we've just completed the capabilities to uh, control these devices. And so what we've done is we've put together a list of all of the different things that we've done a full testing regimen on, which means that we know these devices work and work well. Mm -hmm. um, some, some, sometimes you'll find that um, you'll see this qualified list. That means that you know we've done testing, mm -hmm. and we found either that that company's implementation of the protocol was a little a, a little wonky, or they didn't fully implement the protocol, and so we know that we'll work with them, but we have caveats, right? We'll say, um, you know, this piece of functionality works and works great, but because of the way the company implemented something, we, we don't have this additional set of functionality. Okay, um, and and that's that's true for for especially for for the more complex devices, things like door locks and thermostats. Um, I, I think thermostats is probably the place where we find that. Uh, the most uh, really, really high level of, of complexity. You'll see that of, of, of 12 that were qualified, only only six or would be ones that we would say all the functions work and they work well with, with, with our system. Okay. It's not a vagary of our system. It's just a, it's, it's a artifact of, of the um, fact that Z-Wave over time has evolved as a platform, and you've got lots of different versions of it out there. Okay, great. Thanks for explaining that and breaking it down for us. Uh, let's talk about the variety of expansion cards available for Helix right now. Yeah, again, the, the, the great thing about the, the Helix is its modular capabilities, right? And so um, the translator card uh, enables you to take with a single card and a, and a very low investment in terms of dollars and time, mm -hmm. uh, install a card into the Helix and take over other sensors that already exist in the space. So you're talking 2 gig, GE, NATCO, DSC, Honeywell, the full range of wireless sensors that exist, um, you can put a, a translator card in the Helix and take over those sensors. Mm -hmm. So that makes the Helix a great takeover play. Right? Um, there's also a Z-Wave card, and both the translator and the Z-Wave card, those live in, in slot three, which I think I've got a, a graphic here in a minute that will show the, the various slots, but they live in slot three. So we also have, obviously, a Z-Wave card. That's for home automation, home control. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a third card that fits in that slot, and that's a, that's a combo. It's a translator card and a Z-Wave card, so you don't have to give up Z-Wave if, if you need translator functionality. Um, so there's three cards that live in that, in that, um, in that slot three. And then um, you'll see I've got LTE listed here. Right. Uh, that's because, you know what, we're, we really, when we look at it, um, CMA's, the, the last generation technology, we're moving forward to, to, to LTE, and so LTE is going to be our offering going forward on the, on the Helix. So if you, if you want or need dual path, LTE is the way to go. And then in slot two, you can populate that with a Wi-Fi card. We have two different uh, flavors of the Wi-Fi card. Okay. Um, one of them is for just communicating with the HeliTouch device, with our 7-inch touchscreen. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is if you want to have um, either uh, TriPath or you want your 
to replace your Ethernet cable with a Wi-Fi connection to your home network. Um, so there's two different cards there, and, and it's important that people understand that they do serve two different functionalities so that they don't, don't get the wrong one ordered. And as expansion cards, the dealers are able to customize this to fit their end users' needs, correct? Absolutely. That's, that's kind of the whole point here. The, but between future-proofing and the, the customization, the whole idea is this, is that don't spend more money than you have to, right? If, right. If, I'm gonna, if I have a customer and they want the whole shebang, they want everything, great. I can populate all those cards. I can give them a couple of hella touches. Um, they'll have Z-Wave. They'll have home controls. They'll have, they'll have the entire gambit. Um, but if I have somebody who says, you know what, I just need a simple, simple security system, great. We've got that too. And it starts with the same base, the same hardware. But that person that, that says today, you know, all I can afford is that simple security system, they're tomorrow's whole home automation user, um, and they don't even know it yet because you can always go add the Z-Wave card and, and start adding Z-Wave devices. Right. You could start off very cost conscious and then Absolutely. upgrade through time. Absolutely. All right. Uh, now, this is, I think, one of the slides that you were talking about. Let's go over Helix architecture. Yeah, so I know that when, when we've had this, this slide and we've talked about the Helix before, um, it's, this is a, here's the Helix, and we kind of move on. Yeah. I want to actually kind of walk through some of this stuff yeah, and, let's and, do it. and dig in a little bit. So slot one, the, one, the slot that's on the far, furthest left, um, that is the slot that we use for extended communications. We talked about dual path. Mm -hmm. This is where the CDMA card or the GSM card, if you were, if you were in some place where you needed GSM, or in this case, um, in the case of the new card, the LTE card. Okay. That's where those live. Um, it's also where the Wi-Fi card would live if you were using Wi-Fi instead of Ethernet as your, as your backhaul to the, to the network, right? Right. So you can put that in, all those in that, in that slot. Um, next to that is slot two. That's the Wi-Fi slot. Um, so if you wanted, you could put either the Wi-Fi card for backhaul there or the Wi-Fi card for um, talking to the, to the HelloTouch modules. Okay. So that's what we would use slot two for. And we actually have lots of plans for slot two, so we have other things that we would like to do going forward. Um, so, and, and that's part of this architecture, right, is that we can do that. We can say, hey, you know what, I've got the, the right bandwidth and the right connectivity there. I can go use that for other things later. Okay. Um, and then slot three is for Z-Wave and translator cards. Um, We've already talked about those some, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, but then the other two things I want to point out here is in the top right, um, kind of off on its own, it's separated away, and those, those long antennas that come out of the top and, and run off to the side, Yes. those are the 433 megahertz um, antennas for the Cryptix receiver. Okay. So you've got the Cryptix receiver and radio up at the top. And then on, on the bottom, on the right, is where the Bluetooth radio is. Um, I had a lot of people ask about the Bluetooth radio. It's there for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. One reason is for installation purposes. When I'm installing the Helix, I can use our HeliLink app. Um, currently works on iOS, but I can use the HeliLink app uh, to connect directly to the panel, and it will share, it will download all the, all the features of the panel. It will tell me these are all the zones that are installed, and I can literally walk through on the HeliLink app and make any modifications, configuration changes, things like that that I want to do. Um, but that uses a Bluetooth low energy um, signal so that as soon as I get a little bit further away, that signal will drop, right? And that's important because I don't want somebody to be able to do that remotely. I don't, so I don't want somebody to sit outside with a, with, a, with a cell phone manipulating my system. Okay, so you're doing this on site. It, yeah, it's, it's for the installer, right? And, it, and it's, a, it's a piece of software that was written specifically for installers. I'm doing it on site. Um, and then also we've got the backup battery. Look, this is a UL listed panel. And so uh, I see UL listed. It's, it's a um, UL qualified panel, right? Okay. So, so um, the backup battery means that we have to have at least 24 hours. This actually gets us a little bit more than that. And then you've got the siren. It's important to note that you can, um, in software, you can turn the siren off. So um, well, some people say, well, why in the world would I want to turn the siren off? Well, what you might do is you might, your, your situation might be like mine. My Helix is upstairs in my game room behind the entertainment center. Okay. And that's not a great place for the, for the siren to go off. And if, some, if I've got an intruder, um, I don't want them to run upstairs and find the helix and, and, and yank it out the wall and pull all the things and pull the battery out, right? They might do that. They might destroy the panel. Absolutely. Um, so what I can do is I can turn this siren off, but then have a remote siren. And that's actually, one of the, to me, one of the great features. I can have um, remote sirens in a couple of rooms. I can put one you know, in, in, in the attic like, you, like, like you've uh, done, done in the past. Um, and then obviously going, kind of continuing around, you've got the device enrollment button um, and the Ethernet port. Remember, we're, we're, we're IT first, so that Ethernet sure. port is really our gateway to the, to the Internet and to the uh, security cloud. Fantastic. Great architecture there. 
Uh, let's talk a little bit more about Helix Security. Sure. So, you know, the, the, the Helix was, was built from, from the ground up. Um, obviously, it's a security product. Um, so we took every pain um, to sort through all of the possible ways that the system could be attacked. And that all starts kind of with the root, with the kernel, the, the smallest component of the operating system. And we designed that from scratch, right? So um, it was designed specifically for the Helix. It's not like Linux or Android. It's not something that, um, you know, patching and uh, all those types of things that you kind of think you have to worry about. Okay. You don't need antivirus or anything like that for this thing. Um, but it, the thing to remember here is that all of the services, everything that runs on it, um, the only way to, to modify it is from us. Right? We're the only ones that can touch it. Okay. Um, and it's encrypted. So um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, that's, that, that's bad because that's, that's a closed system. But what we've done is we've designed an API stack in our, in our cloud so that if we need to integrate with other partners, we absolutely can. Okay. And we've got other methodologies to do that. But the, but the key takeaways here was this was designed from the ground up to be hyper secure. E, e, even between the cards, you know, we, we saw the architecture where we've got sure. the, the different cards. Between cards, the data is encrypted as it moves from one card to the other to the, to the next card, if that, if that is the pathway it needs to take. Wow. So on device, it's encrypted. So if you think about the, the system as a whole, um, it's got no built-in user face, user interface. So there's no way to to attack it from a from a touch screen perspective, right? E even when we, where we've got touch screens, they're separated physically from the panel, right? It's not it's all one a built-in one built-in thing. Um, and um, you know, the, the idea is that you're going to your interface is going to be your cellular device or some your some iPad, device, your iPad, your right? tablet. So uh, that gives us a leg up right right from the from the start. Okay. But, um, the, the the key takeaway here is that literally from the sensor to the panel, from the panel to all of the cards within, within, the, car, within the panel, um, and from those cards or the Ethernet port all the way up to the cloud, um, all the data is encrypted every segment across the way um, and, and at rest in the cloud. So that's, that's really the, the important takeaway here. Okay, and now on this next slide, uh, you dig a little bit deeper with security. Yeah, so some people you know, want, want to dig in, and this is, this is a deep dive, so let's, let's talk about how that works, right? Okay. And really this is all done um, using um, you know, really standard asymmetric cryptography, right? It, it's, we took standards that were, that were developed for you know, Department of Defense and those types of things, and we adapted them to, to, this, to these use cases. Right? Okay. So um, you know, you've, got your, you've got a set of keys, and those keys are shared and exchanged between the panel and the cloud and between the, the um, uh, cryptics devices and the panel, um, and that keeps all of this, this secure. Um, and that security is there for a whole bunch of reasons. It's not just there because um, you know we want to have a secure panel. It's also um, it protects you know takeover of those cryptics devices, right? You can't yank that panel and throw another one in and just it, it all works. You've got you've got a, a takeover protection there as well. Okay, fantastic. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the secure smart apps. Yeah, so the, this is kind of near and dear to my heart. I work on these apps every day and okay. spend a lot of time with the developers. So um, so these are my babies, but. Um, the, the main thing for me that, that is important about the apps is that we always we are, we are always moving the apps forward, all right? Um, we just released, you would never know it, but we just released um, a, a new version for, for Android, mm -hmm. um, and you actually have uh, two choices. In the settings, you've got a choice to, to kind of take a step back and use the old version, or you can change the setting and you've got a completely new version of, of, of the Android app that kind of... Um, swipes left and right, and you've got uh, different, you know, panes and panels that you can use. Um, we're always pushing these apps forward, and um, it's something that um, it, anybody who, who calls in and says, hey, I'm having a problem with that, I'm going to say, make sure you're on the newest version, because we're iterating very, very quickly on the apps. And, and as always, and it's, it's a core tenet of, of how we do business, um, dealer first, right? So Absolutely. So you're always going to find the dealer logo um, in the apps. Even though we like to talk about Secure Smart, and that and that's something, but Secure Smart is generic. And it's generic on purpose, um, so that um, the dealer logo can be first, and and it can be about the it's the dealer app fully customizable. Fully customizable. That's fantastic. Um, and we and we intend to advance these. And I, I expect that um, end of the year, early in Q1, you'll see huge advance advancements in the apps. Um, uh, but that's with lots of incremental steps along the way. Okay, available at the Apple App Store or Google Play. Yep. Uh, Scott, now I know a lot of the folks out in our audience are already with IP Data Tell, but let's talk a little bit about 
uh, doing business with IP Datatel? Sure. So we, we've talked the, as, we, as we've gone through this about some, kind of some of our core tenets, right? It's a, it, we, we like to talk about um, you know, being you know, future-proofed, but being, part of being future-proofed is about having really reliable service. Um, and so IP Datatel is reliable alarm communications. Absolutely. Um, it, we also, one of the things we like to talk about is, is universal panel compatibility. Helix is, it, it, not only on the communicator side, where we've got a huge you know, array of panels that, that we're compatible with, uh, but also on the Helix side, right? You've got um, translator modules. We can take over a whole, a whole bunch of sensors. We're compatible with a, an amazing array of, of devices in the marketplace. Um, we've talked about how simple it can be to, to install a Helix, and I think that the same applies for our communicator line. Um, the, the interactive services, the, the software, uh, we're one of the few people in the marketplace that can, that can deliver the entire experience, right? Everything from uh, the, the uh, hardware, mm -hmm. the sensors, all the way through the interactivity components, through the cloud, um, and all the way through to the, the actual software, the user interface. Um, that, that makes us unique in, in, the, in the space. And, and we focused on um, helping the dealers, helping the dealers right. run their business rather than, you know, look how awesome our app is, right? Yeah. We think our app is awesome, but that's not the focus. Um, so, and, and then smart devices. And it, we, we focus on, because we're focused on your, on your, on your business, um, we're always trying to eliminate truck rolls and keep your, keep your costs down. Fantastic. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and click the Show More tab underneath the video where you can view valuable links pertaining to this product, similar how-to videos, and our low-cost, no-contract alarm monitoring services.